Welcome to Carswell's Customs. Today I'm going to take a Ford GT500 supercharger and install it on a Dodge Charger Hemi. Let's get to it. Alright, so this is the parts we're going to be using. Here's the Ford GT500 supercharger. Alright, so here's the parts we're going to be using. This is a TVS supercharger off a uh, 2017 GT500 um, Mustang. This adapter plate goes from this supercharger to this Holly High Ram. This is made by Tom DeMuse. You can find his link in the description. Um, Holly High Ram. They didn't make a low ram um, for, the, uh, for the Hemi application, at least not when I was purchasing this. So we went with the High Ram. Got the stock throttle body over there and those stock injectors. And then I have some Hellcat injectors just in case there's not enough fuel. Um, for this uh, for this setup, also picked up an AEM water meth kit that'll help add some uh, methanol and water, uh, which should pick up some um, fueling, help with the fueling a little bit with the stock injectors, and help cool the intake charge. I chose not to get a uh, intercooler just because the supercharger is already. Uh, 50 feet in the air, um, so I thought that this would be a, a, a better situation too. So, here's my 2017 police charger. My daughter and I airbrushed the uh, True Fire flames on it. It's not a wrap; it's hand done by hand. Here's the uh, engine. I went ahead and pulled the uh, intake manifold off and the injectors, as you've seen a little earlier. And we'll go ahead and route all the hoses and vacuum lines and. Um, fuel injectors as needed. Going to run into a problem with the pulley system and so we'll have to come up with a creative solution to that. I think I've got one figured out. So we'll go ahead and start assembling this and, and get her ready. One more thing. To get ready for this install and put the adapter on and the supercharger you will see that the uh, stock strut tower brace, I went ahead and cut that back. This is a temporary solution just so we can get everything fitted and get the car running. Um, if I have to, I'll go ahead and weld up uh, another support that ties these two together, or maybe I'll engineer one that bends further back under here and closer to these steering arms, or sorry, not steering arms, but uh, windshield wiper arms, and, um, and, and make clearance for the adapter and the, uh, and the high ram. So other than that, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty easy install. So I went ahead and installed the uh, included studs um, with the Holly High Ram kit. Uh, looks like they missed one, so I'm going to leave that front one off and continue with installation until I find another stud and I can add that on later. Prepping the High Ram intake, I went ahead and plugged these two big ports and the EGR port. I'm going to save this opening as a boost reference and I'll probably tee that off or uh, um, somehow route that and we'll get it to the um, this boost uh, I don't know I forget the name it escapes me right now we need a vacuum port or boost reference to that I don't know you call it a solenoid or whatever now we're moving on to putting some gaskets in and uh, the Holly gasket something to be prepared for these things are the rubber is way too big for for the port and again the EGR or the gas recirculation port here too this one is too big as well so I'm gonna to have to cut these gaskets down and then uh, see how it's too big cut them in lay them flat get them as tight as I can uh, butt them up end to end and then bolt the uh, intake down so There we go. Now I found the missing stud. It goes into this tall boss that's machined into the intake by the oil fill cap. So, well, we'll take it off and move the little stud and put the big one in.
All right, so a quick squirt of WD-40 to make sure these injectors slide in right. Yeah. Okay, looking pretty good already. Now for the fuel system, I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging in these things, these 8AN males to dash 8, and they're a 3 quarter 16 O-ring. So, the 3 quarter 16 runs into the end of this uh, fuel log, fuel rail. And I'm gonna run is these elbows, and I'm going to go to a braided braided hose, nylon braided hose, fuel hose. Okay, we'll come straight across, elbow into this, and then I'll talk about the back here in a sec. So you can see there's an offset in the uh, the fuel logs, how far or fuel rails, how far they are back, how they're oriented. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of using just this uh, AN fitting, I'm going to go ahead and add an AN um, adapter that has a fuel pressure gauge in this as well. So we'll see how that looks. Alright, so that doesn't look too bad, but it does, I still do have an offset, but the braided fuel line should be able to chicane its way over there to the other, uh, the other port, and I'll have a fuel gauge right on the rail, which is awesome, so. Okay, cool, now we got to move to the back and see how we're going to cap these, uh, cap this end off in the back here. Alright, so I went ahead and used the 3 quarter 16 to dash 8 AN adapter for the fuel rail and I'm just going to use one of these caps, AN caps. And no, I'm not trying to be stylish with the color, it's just that these were on sale at Summit and the black ones were like double or triple the, the money. So um, yeah, whatever, money wins in this situation. So this is a good looking mock-up. over here and I'm waiting on one more fitting it goes dash 16 o-ring and then it has a little 90 degree turn and then it um, hooks into a stock fuel line fitting so this is the actual fuel line I got it wrapped up and so hopefully I won't have to do too much finagling and it'll be able to connect right to it Oop. connect right to it supply the log with fuel Fuel will run around and it'll hold quite a bit of volume based on it all being dash 8 fuel line. So that's the theory. We'll see what happens. All right, so I went ahead and got the fuel line created here. That turned out pretty well. Got a fuel pressure gauge. And then I went ahead and cut back the wiring loom a little bit to give this these fuel injector leads enough uh, free play. So that turned out to be a pretty easy situation. This side the same thing. And then we're just waiting for the end to come in here from Summit. And I'll go ahead and hook our fuel line to that. And that should complete the fuel system. I left this port open back here for a boost referenced um, items uh, such as like the uh, map sensor. The meth injection kit has a progressive uh, boost referenced um, adjuster to increase or decrease 
the meth that's injected. We'll run that off of there as well. And uh, whatever else I forgot for boost or vacuum referenced uh, items. So I guess we'll go ahead and move on um, and then put the uh, adapter on and the supercharger and see how close we are with the existing hoses such as the, the brake hose and I think there is an EVAP hose over there as well. Here's Tom's supercharger adapter. Adapts the Holly bolt pattern under here, the intake itself, to the M122 and TVS and other models of uh, Ford superchargers. So we'll put that in place and get some bolts in it. Alright, that's it. Now you can adapt the Holly high ram or low ram intake manifold to the uh, M122 or the TVS superchargers and there's some other bolt patterns that Tom can uh, put into this adapter as well. So again, his uh, information will be in the description. So just check on that and send him a message and he can probably can get you an adapter for just about anything. Alright, and here's the star of the show. All right, so looking pretty sharp here. Now that we see where everything's kind of sitting and laying, we'll go ahead and start running the, uh, the existing vacuum lines for the vehicle to the ports on the M122, or the, sorry, the TVS supercharger. Uh, I got a couple parts that are gonna prevent me from finishing this today. Again, it's the fuel line adapter, and Tom DeMuse is making me a um, TVS supercharger to LS adapter that goes right here and then I have another adapter that goes from LS to um, the Dodge throttle body bolt pattern so it might be a little adapter adapter but we'll get some specs on it and then we'll probably he'll probably make the uh, uh, the one shot that goes directly from the TVS supercharger to the the Dodge throttle body so the drive-by wire but yeah everything is is looking pretty straightforward here We'll get the rest of these things buttoned up, or at least as far as we can, and then we can start on this pulley bracket here. I'm going to use this pulley bracket as a, uh, I'm going to change it from a single pulley to a double pulley. So we'll run the belt system over into another pulley, and it'll come back around here, come down, hit that pulley, and then continue on its way. So. I believe, or I feel like that'll be the easiest with this with this serpentine system. So, um, at least that's the that's the plan right now. But we'll check her out here. All right, so mock-ups going well. I went ahead and grabbed some aluminum that I had laying around, and I made a plate that hooked to the existing. Um, you know, like an idler pulley or a dead pulley and I added a an additional pulley from the uh, from an LS accessory drive I had out here comes around and uses that original stock pulley and it goes down to the uh, air conditioning condenser so as you can see got a lot of things taken care of today I've got to have this new mount TIG welded up and we also need the throttle body adapter and a couple of other, other things and some hose for the positive crankcase ventilation but yeah good day so we're gonna we're gonna end the video here 
and then I'll make another one when I get the rest of the parts and hopefully we'll be firing it in that second video so come on back <laughs>